Hi, hello everyone. This is Kelly. How are you doing? I hope you're well. I um, haven't done a live for a little bit because I had a client here last week on a deep dive intensive and it was amazing. Really a lot of work done by the client, by me, by I have an amazing team around to support me. So a lot of work done. So I spent a lot of time well with the client or actually just recuperating and resting because it was a lot of work. But anyhow, big transformation really shook off years of fear, of paranoia, anxiety, not being able to live from their purpose, not being able to actually function almost, it got that bad as it does. If we leave things, then if we leave things to fester, then you know, the universe is kind of keep giving us a kick up the bum until we do something about it. So very rewarding work to do that. Anyhow, today I'm here to talk to you about owning your sovereignty as a queen. And really what this is about at the crux of it is boundaries. There's so many good work out there on boundaries now. A lot of you have probably seen Brenny Brown's work on boundaries, which is really amazing. Um, and so the thing is, we're not really taught boundaries, um, you know, when it comes to growing up. Um, we are given boundaries often by our parents, but we're not really taught how to put boundaries in and install them. And so what I'm going to be talking to you about today is coming at it from a different perspective, from an energetic perspective. So some women can be real overgivers. We are actually conditioned to put others first a lot of the time, you know, it can be putting our family first, um, putting our husband first, putting our friends first, uh, putting people first. And so having wishy-washy boundaries, I have found is quite common with a lot of my clients. Now, people that have boundaries don't get this. They just think, well, it's really simple, right? You, you set the boundary, you communicate it, you honor it, you give consequence if they don't do it and you uphold the consequence. So, you know, people that are used to doing that, when they come across someone that has wishy-washy boundaries, they think, well, why can't you do that? It's so simple, you know, set them, communicate them, honor them yourself and enforce them, you know? So what? why is that a problem? Why are you struggling so much with setting your boundaries? And it sounds so simple, but here is the reason that I found with my clients. It's not a mental, logical process of having to set a boundary and enforcing it, although that is one side of the coin. It's the energetics around it. It's the energetics around your queendom, your domain, that may be an issue that is making it difficult for you to set boundaries. And so if you think of yourself as a kind of crystal vase, a very beautiful, delicate crystal vase, and your vase, your energetic vase, it would be full of your energy, your own energy, and what that may look like tangibly is what's important to you, your values, um, what your life purpose is, what you've come on earth to do, what you love doing, your own ideas, your own creative projects, your own love and self-honour. And so all of these things are energy. So if you have a beautiful crystal vase, then that would be full of your own energy, your own ideas, creativity, projects, purpose, and you would feel full, so very full of all of these beautiful things, your beautiful energy. And your energy would fill up, it would fill up your own crystal vase, and you would really radiate that out to the world as a full, whole person, a queen really owning your sovereignty. Now, 
in that space, in your domain, there's no room for anything else because you're so full in the most beautiful way of yourself. Um, you're full of you. So if this isn't the case, if, if, if your vase is not full of your energy, then nature abhors a vacuum. And so it may become full of other people's energy. And so what this may look like is other people's ideas of what you should be, um, family's ideas of what you should be doing in a job, partners and friends' ideas of what they think is a good time for you or a relaxing time for you or what you should be loving. Could be other people's businesses. You know, you could be in a career or uh, working for someone else where you're really fulfilling what they need. Could be fulfilling other people's values. So that can look like um, doing things with other people that they find fun and you're kind of okay with it. You're not really loving it, but you're going with the flow. Going with the flow is another uh, way of being full of other people's ideas. And so very gently what happens is your crystal vase gets full of other people's ideas, other people's values, other people's purposes, other people's creative projects, other people's ideas. And what this does is it really makes a mix of everything. It's a mix of your ideas, your values, your purpose, your energy, and other people's ideas, values, and energy. And so this is one of the main things that creates confusion and wishy-washy boundaries. And this is how you may feel. You might feel confused. You may not really know what it is that you'd really love or what your purpose is. Um, you may think you don't have a purpose. You may feel kind of energetically quite wishy-washy, kind of flowy, airy, not really fully grounded in your body because guess what? If, if your energetic vase is full of other people's energy, you've gone somewhere else, basically. You're not in your body. So it can feel quite airy, quite out there you know even people in the spiritual world can be you know quite out there but they're not really in their body it can feel like you just go with the flow and it's okay and you don't really know what you want and you feel like you have no drive or motivation to do anything and this is why it's because you've got all mixed up with everyone else's and the more that this goes on the more that you don't own your sovereignty you certainly don't even know where your domain is and you're not not communicating it and getting that sorted so the really the first step to owning your sovereignty is to really clear up this energetic vase your energetic vase really get out everyone else's energies ideas projects values because when that's out then you can start to fill yourself again with your own natural source energy. And when you do that, it feels amazing. You feel full of vitality. You feel energized. You feel like you're self-honoring and really self-loving yourself. It's like you've come back home to you and it is such a rich, deep feeling that you almost think, God, how did I how did I live before without this? So the first step is to really spring clean this because when you do this, then you can define where is your domain and where is not your domain and who is allowed in your domain and who isn't. But you can't get into defining boundaries until you are owning your own sovereignty fully, deeply, self-lovingly, self-honoringly. Because when you do that, then it becomes very clear what is yours and what is someone else's ideas. It gives you that liberation, that liberation 
to know what it is that you would love in your life and actually then you feel the energy and vitality to go for it because you have that certainty, you have that clarity. And so confusion doesn't enable you to move forward because you're all mixed up with everyone else's ideas. So this would be my first invitation to you to really spring clean your energetics around this so you can really step into your sovereignty, into your queendom. And if you want more info on that, just reach out to me. I can talk to you about how we do that. This is one of the things, just one of the things I'm going to be doing on my upcoming retreat next year in April, here in Ibiza, of course. My retreat is called Birth Your Venus. It's about birthing your inner goddess, liberating her from inside of you to really radiate and shine out your light, to live your purpose, to birth your creative projects, what you've really come on this earth to do, if it's a book, if it's babies, if it's some kind of mission to help save humanity in the world, it's time to stop playing small and really birth your inner Venus because when you do that, you give yourself full permission to own your light and to shine it out into the world and to bring these things into being that we are all waiting for. We're waiting for you to bring this into being. So if this is resonating with you, then you can also reach out about the retreat. Um, five places are gone, so there's seven places left. Um, and if you book by the end of November, you get a 500 pound bonus. So a great thing to do before you start buying Christmas presents for everyone else over givers. It's time to give to yourself. Let's talk about it because it's application only. Um, so I wanna make sure that you are ready for this deep transformation into your inner Venus. If you've got any other questions about what I've talked about today, please put in the comments and I'll come back to you, my lovelies. Thank you so much. Lots of love. Bye.